The tallest players in the NBA now include Chet Holmgren at 7'1", Bull Bull at 7'3", and Victor Wembanyama at 7'4". Tallest player ever was George Mirasan and Manu Bull at 7'7", but 18-year-old Olivier Ryu smashes that at 7 feet 9 inches tall and growing. At 12 years old, a video of him dominating other kids went viral. Steph Curry commented so many questions, but that was six years ago. He is now at one of the biggest basketball schools in the country. So can Olivier Ryu actually make it to the league? Because if he does, we have never seen anything like it. He would literally be the tallest NBA player of all time. There have been six people seven foot, seven inches or taller who have tried to make the league since George Mirasan retired. But is there such a thing as too tall for basketball? Thanks to Bear Mattress for sponsoring today's video. They have launched early access to their Labor Day sale, but Bear has given me a unique discount code that's higher than what's been offered on their site. So head to bearmattress.com slash amhoops, use my code amhoops. Bear Mattress is a premium fiberglass free mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your overall quality of life, and it is conveniently shipped to your door for free. Bear Sleep Quiz matches you on the perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. I took the survey, matched with a Star Hybrid because I sleep hot and I want cushioning, comfort, and support. So they shipped it right to my door and the box unveiled a next level sleep experience. I am in love with my Bear mattress, but if I wasn't for any reason, they have a 120 night sleep trial just to make sure. It's got a lifetime warranty with financing options available. Now I've had my bear mattress for about two weeks and I love it. The only problem is it's so comfortable that my dog and my kid want to sleep there too. So I've had to set some boundaries. Also, I tend to sleep hot, but Bear Sleep Recovery Technology uses sealant powered fabric that helps me stay cool throughout the night. All of Bear's mattresses are also created without the use of harmful chemicals. And unlike other brands, do not contain fiberglass, which can be detrimental to your health. But don't just take my word for it. Bear also ran a survey on over 300 of their recent customers. 82% saw an improvement in their sleep quality on their new Bear mattress, which is why 95% of those customers said they would recommend Bear to a friend. I think you're gonna love it too. So if you're looking to upgrade your sleep, head to Bear Mattress mattress.com slash am hoops use my code am hoops to get 40 percent off your bare mattress and 400 sleep accessories this is higher than what is being offered on site so check it out while you still can that is bare mattress.com slash am hoops link in the description Sun Ming Ming was 7'9", just like Olivier, but running was difficult for him because he wore two smallest shoes as a kid, which deformed his feet. He needed surgery, which put him in debt, so he turned to basketball to pay his medical bills. The only job he could get was in something called the U.S. Basketball League. Oh, his games were sold out but it was just so people could watch the freak show in person. Seven foot seven Neil Fingleton moved from England to pursue basketball in the US. He led his high school to a championship and was a McDonald's All-American. This dude could play. So good he signed on at Michael Jordan's college, UNC, but back surgery ended his career. Then there's seven foot seven Robert Bobrovsky. He tried like hell to put on weight, but was rail thin no matter what ate almost 5,000 calories a day. He required medical treatment for a deformed spine and gave up basketball. Now what's crazy about all three is they all found success in movies. Ming Ming was a bad guy in Rush Hour 3. Fingleton was in Game of Thrones and Robert is in the new Alien Romulus movie. Pretty weird, but Olivier might not have to go that route. See, his height isn't even from a genetic abnormality. There's literally nothing wrong with him. Doctors say it's just from genetics. His dad is 6'8", his mom is 6'1", and his brother is 6'9". And when you look at Olivier alone, it's not even obvious that he's freakishly tall. Dude's proportions are solid, despite being seven foot nine, but he could get even taller. When Olivier was five years old, he was already taller than his kindergarten teacher. At eight, he was six foot one, hit seven feet tall at 12 
12 years old and at 14 set the record for the world's tallest teenager at seven foot five, one inches taller than Wimby at 14 years old. The record for tallest living man is in Turkey at eight foot two. Olivier could actually catch him. But that kind of sucks. Wherever Olivier goes, he has to duck under doors, barely fits into cars. People stare and point like he's a freak. Which made one tall guy give out business cards that said, yes, I'm tall, I'm six foot 10. No, I'm not kidding. No, I don't play basketball, I play volleyball. Yeah, the weather's nice up here, nice try. This has been a great conversation. So annoying. The world is not made for people that tall. But basketball was. In the 1980s, Olivier might be the number one pick someday. Hoops was dominated by big men like Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem, and Shaq. But things changed in the mid 2000s with rule tweaks and analytics forcing teams to take threes. Now, successful seven footers have to give up their size advantage by shooting out from the perimeter or be labeled a modern day Roy Hibbert, which is a nice way of saying bust. For example, seven foot four Zach Eady won National College Player of the Year in 2023 and 2024. But instead of going number one, like he would have in the 80s, he fell to ninth, the third center off the board, because he plays old school. He doesn't shoot. That's not good enough. I mean, Giannis is 6'11", but he has ball skills to create for himself and others. Nikola Jokic is a cross between a big man and a playmaker. At the very least, big guys need to be mobile. They can't be a statue out there. So how does Olivier Ryu stack up? Well, I'm not gonna lie. He's not great. Coming out of high school, he was ranked number 305th in the nation in a three-star recruit. He's from Montreal, Canada, and at 16, he had offers from private high schools to develop his game. Even Real Madrid, where Luca came up, but he chose IMG Academy in Florida, where some of the best young players play. His biggest strength is rim protection and setting screens, but getting back on defense is tough because he's so slow. And is he coordinated? I mean, being that tall and being coordinated is so rare that when Wimby does it, we say, well, he might be the best of all time. Well, Olivier looks clumsy but I don't blame him because think about it from 17 to 18 years old which is what he is now he grew three inches from seven foot six to seven foot nine so every year he's having to learn to play in a new body he can improve more once he stops growing now there aren't a lot of stats from team Canada u19 but recently he scored 10 points and 10 boards a game in limited minutes and he made players pay for fouling him dude hit nine of 13 free throws which is a great sign though he doesn't take outside shots yet. Now, after IMG Academy, he went to the University of Florida, who regularly put out first round picks to the NBA. Bradley Beal, Al Horford, Dorian Finney-Smith, Joking Noah, but he went as a preferred walk-on, not even a scholarship. But I'll give him this, at every single spot, Olivier has challenged himself against the best competition he could. Like he could have gone to a D2 school and started, but he wants more, so he walks on at Florida. Or he could have gone to one of those private high schools, but he went to IMG Academy. Now, as far as the NBA goes, the tallest player recently was Taco Fall. He was a fan favorite for Boston, but only played 37 games, went to the G League, and is now in China. I think Olivier will play all four years in college, then maybe get a second round pick, probably undrafted. He will play in summer league someday and be a huge hit just like Taco was. People will pack the arena, but I think his ceiling in the NBA is Boban Marjanovic. Boban was slow by NBA standards, but just good enough to stay in the league for nine years and make $38 million plus endorsement deals. Dude was in tons of commercials from Goldfish to State Farm, and of course, acting like all these freakishly tall guys. Boban and John Wick 3. In fact, I think NIL money will be huge for Olivier in college. If I were him, I would focus on my social media game to capitalize on the curiosity people have about him. But Boban stayed in the league because he was a great teammate and a hard worker. And we already see those two things from Olivier. So I think he's got the skills to have a look at the NBA. He's not like those other failed guys from the beginning of this video who had to go into acting. Olivier can play, but being super tall ain't good enough anymore. Dude still has a long way to go, even at seven foot nine and growing. But the worst performing video that I've done in forever, I know I've said that previously about other videos, this one's even worse than that. It is the sons of NBA players who are about to enter the draft. Like we have 15 kids in the top 75 recruits 
whose dad played in the NBA. I'm talking Andre Iguodala II, Dominique Wilkins' son, Jacob, a stud like Dylan Harper and Cam Boozer. So I compared all these kids to their legendary dads.